Hey guys, I'm here to do a book review on Without Looking Back by Tabitha Suzuma. And this is a request, <coughs> excuse me, from Claudia from Mrs. Book Lover <coughs> that I read this um, after the book I was reading currently at the time. And I read this book. It took me less than 24 hours to read. And the reason I always tell you guys that is because the speed of which I read also dictates how much I like a book. Um, there are some exceptions, like Unearthly, that took me three days. And that really, 36 hours, it was less than that. But, um, and I know that it was over 400 pages, but still, I kept stopping on that book. But yet, I gave it five stars. So, that didn't indicate to me... You know, I'd say more on the shorter books. Um, this book, I'd give, like, I'd probably give, like, see, this one's hard for me to, to rate. I'd say, like, a three stars. It wasn't a bad book at all, but, I mean, it was an easy read. It, um, I actually flew through it, obviously. Um, but, there wasn't enough... There wasn't any, like, climax to it for me. There wasn't any enough drama, I guess, in it for me. Those are the type of books I like. Um, but I'll read the back to you and then tell you a little bit about it. Lewis lives for dance, so it's a big shock when Dad suddenly whisks him and his siblings away on holiday in the middle of term, just before a major competition. Lewis's parents have been locked in a custody battle, however, so this is a rare chance for Lewis to get to see his father. But then Dad starts to act strangely again. Why is he being so secretive, and why won't he let them call home? Then Lewis comes across a poster, a missing persons poster, and it has his face on it. So, obviously, it's about custody battle. Lewis and his brother Max and his younger sister Millie all live with their mother, and the, her, their mother and father is going through a custody battle. And the mother is trying to get custody, full custody of the children where they're only able to see their father and supervise visits. I think it was like one week in a month. And their father does not want that because their kids are everything to him. And, wow, sorry, I had a hard time swallowing. Um, so they go and stay with them because currently they're able to stay with them every other weekend. So it's their weekend to go stay with them. And they go to stay with them and their dad tells them that they're going to be going on a little trip over the weekend. So not to get too settled at his place right now because they're going to end up really early in the morning to go somewhere. Well, Lewis happens to overhear a conversation that the dad is having with somebody. Basically telling this person that their mother had won the custody battle and that now he's only going to be offered those supervised visits one week in a month and that's not something he can live with he can't live with that decision so basically what happens is is the father kidnaps the kids um the kids he keeps it a secret from them for a little while and makes it seem like it's just this big vacation and it's this fun thing that they're doing but they're having to go from you know, they go on a plane, and they go to this one place, and then they stay overnight there, and then they have to go somewhere else, and if you've ever seen any of those Lifetime movies about it, that's exactly what they have to do, change their hair and their names, and and uh, he tries to make a game out of it. And um, Lewis, like it says on the back, actually stumbles upon a missing persons poster with him and his siblings' picture on it, and that's when he knows, uh-uh, something's up, obviously, and confronts his dad about it. And when he confronts his father about it, of course, his brother and sister are there. And the dad basically tells them that, well, I was going to tell you guys, but I was scared how to tell you guys. And basically brought it down to that it was up to the kids. It was up to his children what they wanted to do, if they wanted to stay with him or if they wanted to go back to live with their mom. Uh, personally, I think two things on that. One, that seems awesome that you're able to give your children that choice. But, two, that's a huge, huge thing to put on their shoulders. Um, because 
if they go back, it's like they're betraying you. And if they stay, they only may be staying because they don't want to hurt you. And then they lose everything at home. But what if they really want to stay? I mean, it's just, you know, they don't know uh, what the long-term effects of that's going to be. Or even the short-term um, of their choice. And I just, yeah. So even though he was trying to do it out of kindness and love for them, it's a huge thing to ask a child, I think. Um, the oldest of the siblings is 14. And then Lewis was 12 and Millie was 8. So, basically that's what the story is about. It's about them trying to hide their real identities, but still trying to make a life where they're at. And with kids, it's hard to do. Things slip up. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it was an interesting book in that sense. Um, but there were no high moments for me. Um, it was um, still a good book, like I said. The characters are good. Good. Um, it was told in the narrative, uh, Lewis's narrative, uh, his point of view, whatever his. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I wish that some drama would have happened out of it. Um, but I think that would have definitely made me give it higher stars. But since there really wasn't any high points like that, any, like, drama or, like, uh, oh, my gosh, and, oh, my, you know, just that kind of stuff, um, you know, that's why I gave it a three, three and a half. I mean, it, like I said, it was a good book. Um, so, yeah, so I would check it out. Without Looking Back by Tabitha Suzuma. And she's got other books. It tells you in the back other books that she's written. Um, like I said, the kids lived in Paris with their mother, and when their father took them, they went to England, I believe, is where it was. So, it was interesting to hear kind of the way they talked there, um, and just some of the, the customs and stuff, um, a little bit of the way they did things, or what, how they used words, that was interesting. Um, but it was still enough that I understood it, uh, it was still, um, it wasn't so much, you know, um, but I guess in England, they speak English anyways. I'm sorry, but I don't know my different languages and different countries and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I know Paris is French. I know that. <laughs> uh, Spain is Spanish. Mexico is Spanish, whatever. Um, but, yeah. So, I don't know. I, yeah. So, that's all I have for you guys. Um, I think I'm going to actually read... The First Midnighter series by Scott Westerfeld. And, yeah. So, that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.